Life Audio. Christian Parent Crazy World with Katherine Seegers is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics to help you be a godly parent in an ungodly world. I am your host, Katherine Seegers, and in today's episode, we will tackle this critically important question. How do you parent a child that identifies as LGBTQ biblically? This is a tough question, none tougher when it comes to the challenge we face as moms and dads who want to parent biblically in our culture, a culture that says we are oppressive and hateful if we don't affirm a child's choices in this area. And this is a topic that every parent needs help with because even if your kids are not struggling with an unwanted sexual attraction or questioning their gender, their friends are. My guest today, Melinda Patrick, has been parenting an LGBTQ identifying child for 12 years. She has a wealth of experience to share that will bless, encourage, and convict us all. That's the plan for this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World. So let's get started. You may be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know that we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store? One of those shows, Words of Life, is currently in a series on parenting. We'll be joined by families at all stages of parenting to hear their testimony and what they've learned along the way. We've realized that we are her first experience with faith, you know, and what she sees in us. And we're really mindful of how we react to things on how we speak. I've always thought, like, I'm not raising this kid to just grow up, right? I'm raising them to be a fully grown adult who is functional in society. As a father, as a parent, I feel my goal in life is to share the very best parts of me. Those values that you guys instilled in us certainly is something that we give to ours. Find Words of Life wherever you get your podcasts or visit wordsoflifepodcast.org to start listening. Anticipated rock holiday tradition returns. Trans Siberian Orchestra live in concert. Coming to a city near you. A legendary blend of rock, classical, and holiday music for the entire family. Don't miss Trans Siberian Orchestra live in concert. The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. Go to TSOTickets.com for info. You know, this is such a tough topic, moms and dads. And I want to take just a few minutes before we dive into today's episode with Melinda on how to parent a child that struggles in their sexuality, which is really powerful, by the way. I think it's our best episode yet. But I I want to clarify and even correct a couple of things from a previous episode. You could call this a little cleanup on all four. You know, it's so hard talking about such a sensitive topic like this. And you don't see from every vantage point. And sometimes you can miss the forest for the trees. Sometimes you don't explain everything perfectly. Hopefully you have some people in your life who can help you with that. I do. I was contacted by a very good friend who happens to be a pastor after episode 77 came out on Andy Stanley, and he had some constructive feedback and criticism. So I'd like to address those concerns because I think that they are valid and they require some clarification and even corrections on my part. First off, you know, I came down pretty hard on Stanley's claim that God did not answer the prayers of these individuals who prayed and prayed and prayed for God to take their same-sex attraction away. And I concluded that since this is a righteous prayer, this meant that God was either not good or he wasn't powerful enough to answer that prayer. And my friend really challenged me on that conclusion. And, you know, I I think he's right. There are times, obviously, when God doesn't answer our prayers the way that we want him to. But that doesn't mean he isn't good or he isn't 
powerful. That is not the necessary conclusion of that reality the way that I, I think I made it sound. God will, however, empower us to walk through that challenging situation. And I believe that empowering is itself an answer to prayer. That is that is honestly what I meant. That was what was going through my head. But I don't think I clarified that. And look, I'd refer you to episode 70 with Andy Howard, which was on that very topic, when God doesn't answer our prayers the way we hoped he would. What bothered me about Stanley's statement in his sermon, the claim that God didn't answer their prayer, was that he just left it hanging there without an explanation as to why that is. And and that can cause someone to conclude that God isn't good or he isn't powerful enough. Of course, that would be a wrong conclusion, but it is also a wrong conclusion that God will always answer our prayers the way we want him to. And I could have inadvertently left people with that takeaway, and that simply isn't the case. Look, I don't personally know if God is going to take away all of a person's same-sex attraction and their sanctification process here on earth. I don't. But I do know that God can and will empower us to live a holy life in Christ Jesus no matter what we struggle with. And that is some really good news that I wish had been in Andy Stanley's message and mine for that matter. Okay, One other major concern addressed was the issue of the circles and the lines. Stanley said that we need to minister from the circle of God's love. And he accused Moeller of ministering from the lines, which is God's standard. That is, by the way, the way that Moeller often ministers. And it sounded like it was approving of that. And and actually... (laughs) I'm not. I don't think we should minister from the lines, but I do think that we need to hold the line. And actually, today's conversation with Melinda is going to go a long way to clarifying this point. But but to be clear, I agree with Stanley that we should minister from the circle of God's love. If you have a friend or a loved one or a child who struggles with same-sex attraction or gender confusion— We should always minister from that great, big, wide circle of God's love. As Melinda and I are going to talk about today, if you've got a child in your home who is struggling in their sexuality, but they were raised biblically, they already know the lines. You don't have to minister from the lines. You don't even have to mention them. You will hear how Melinda made that mistake with her daughter early in their journey, and it caused a lot of damage. And if you are ministering to someone who wasn't raised biblically, we still need to minister from the circle, from the love. You know why? Because they already know the lines, too, because the church's position on this topic is not exactly a secret. They don't need megaphones and sandwich boards. What they need to know is God's love. But here's the kicker. That being said, we must not cave on the line if we want people to walk in freedom. My concern and Melinda's concern is that we believe Andy Stanley is caving on the line when he affirms an LGBTQ identity, which was the ground we covered in episode 78. And and here's one other way that Stanley is not upholding the line. This is information that we did not cover in episode 77, but Melinda and I had talked about it before, and it was kind of foundational in our understanding of what he was saying in the message. This is really important. Um, The head of the Parent Connect ministry at Stanley's Church for LGBTQ parents is a woman named Debbie Causey. She is LGBTQ affirming publicly Causey has been at Stanley Church for over 22 years now, I think, and she is the head of all of the care ministries at North Point Community Church. She is also currently on the board for Renovus, an organization whose stated mission is affirming homosexuality and transgenderism in the Christian community. Her bio on that website starts by stating her pronouns, and in the bio she says, quote, I want every person to know that they do not have to choose between their faith and their sexuality. And it breaks my heart that so many LGBTQ plus Christians think that they do. End quote. Let me just say that all of our hearts break over this issue. They do. Mine does. But that does not mean we should affirm something that God does not affirm because that is not truly loving someone. 
There are other leaders at Parent Connect, like Greg and Lynn McDonald, who are also in the affirming camp as well. Let me just say that we need to be lovingly communicating with people who disagree with us on this and all issues. And I take Stanley at his word that he affirms the New Testament sexual ethic. But I, here's the rub. These people who Stanley disagrees with on God's perspective on sexuality run the ministry at his church for families who are dealing with the issue of sexuality in their homes. So while Stanley says that his church believes and teaches the New Testament sexual ethic, the leaders of his church's ministry for parents whose kids are struggling in their sexuality believe our culture's sexual ethic. These beliefs are diametrically opposed to one another. What we believe matters because it affects everything. It affects how you minister, how you love, the type of aid you will offer. This matters deeply to families who are going through this. They are blindsided by what is going on in their homes. They are hurt and confused and they go to their church for ministry and for answers Whose answers are they getting at Stanley's church? Are they being counseled towards the mission of the church or towards the mission of the ministry leaders? Are they being counseled toward God or the world, truth or a lie, life or death? The answers to these questions have eternal consequences. Where's the line? This is why lines matter. Yes, by all means, love. Love first and love large. But the line orients the direction of our love. It tells us what we are loving people to. Are we loving them to life or are we loving them to death? I don't want to love the next generation to death. I want to love them to life. One final thought here before we get to the conclusion of my interview with Melinda. And this is this is really important. All this talk about sexuality does necessarily move us away from the primary issue, which is salvation. So this has to be said. The issue of sexuality is secondary to salvation. Still important, but it doesn't come first. Someone does not have to get in line with the New Testament sexual ethic in order to be saved. They don't. And I would propose that most of the time, a person's sexuality doesn't get sorted out until after they get saved, sometimes long after. Remember Blake Howard, the former drag queen turned minister who I had on my show earlier this year? I think that was like episodes 59 and 60. He continued to live as a gay man for some time after getting saved. Rosaria Butterfield continued to live as a lesbian with her partner for more than a year after getting saved. Laura Perry Smoltz continued to live as a man for over a year after getting saved. So I, I want to be abundantly clear about this. These precious sons and daughters of God were saved and heaven bound at the point that they came to faith in Christ Jesus. God did not require them to get all of their sin problems fixed at the point of confession any more than he does with us. That is not how it works. But at some point in the sanctification process, Jesus lovingly addressed Blake and Rosaria and Laura's sexuality, and he led them to freedom. And because he is Lord of their lives, they followed him and his word. That is where freedom lies. And every parent who is walking through this is crying out for their kids to walk in freedom. So how do we minister from the circle of God's love while not caving on the line? Melinda Patrick, our good friend who is host of the Bridge Between Us podcast, Loving Your LGBTQ Identified Child While Not Compromising Truth. Melinda and I are going to talk about that after the break. You may be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know that we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store? One of those shows, Words of Life, is currently in a series on parenting. We'll be joined by families at all stages of parenting to hear their testimony and what they've learned along the way. We've realized that we are her first experience with faith, you know, and what she sees in us. And we're really mindful of how we react to things and how we speak. 
I've always thought, like, I'm not raising this kid to just grow up, right? I'm raising them to be a fully grown adult who is functional in society. As a father, as a parent, I feel my goal in life is to share the very best parts of me. Those values that you guys instilled in us certainly is something that we give to ours. Find Words of Life wherever you get your podcasts or visit wordsoflifepodcast.org to start listening. The most anticipated rock holiday tradition returns. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. Coming to a city near you. A legendary blend of rock, classical, and holiday music for the entire family. Don't miss Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. Go to TSOTickets.com for info. Welcome back again, Melinda. (laughs) You're a good friend of this podcast now. You've been here breaking down Andy Stanley's message. But today, today we want to hear from you. I'm so glad that you took the time to stick around and, and share with us your testimony in this episode, Melinda. Yes. I, I Look, Catherine, I love our conversation. And so I'm just so thankful for the opportunity to to share God's story. It's, it's really God's story. And so thank you for giving me the place to do that. Today, what we're going to do is talk about how to minister to all the people in your life. And if you're a parent of a child who's struggling in this area, how to parent a child who's struggling with LGBTQ attractions or uh, gender dysphoria. So we want to hear from you, Melinda, because this is your story on how to biblically parent your child who struggles with same-sex attraction or gender dysphoria, because you've walked that road for over 12, uh, uh, coming on 12 years now, right? Yes. November will be 12 years. Okay. Tell us your story. Yes. So November of 2011, my daughter came to me and and shared with me that she struggled with same-sex attraction. And at that time, I feel like you need to know a little bit of the, the backstory. At that time, uh, I was a Bible study teacher at a rather large church. I was on the women's ministry team. I had a, a ministry in my home where I ministered to women. I would open my doors up one day a month and really discipled women, showed them how to study God's word, that kind of thing. And so you would have thought when my daughter came to me that I would have done everything right. And and my daughter and I had what I thought was a good relationship too. I was a single mom at the time and, and we did a lot of things together. So when she came to me, my first words to her were, it's okay, I'm going to get you to a counselor in six months. We'll get you fixed and no one will know that we've walked this. Mm. I hope all of your stomachs are turning right now. Just, just as mine does still 12 years later. Mm -hmm. I think one of the the greatest things I've had to walk through is learning how to forgive myself Mm. on the mistakes that, that I have made. And so my reaction, my, my bad response in that really sent my relationship with my daughter in a, in a downward spiral. And within a matter of months, she had packed up and and moved in with her dad. And we went almost two years without a good relationship. She would only come around if other family members or other people were around because she did not see me as safe. But I will also say it wasn't just me. It was also her because she didn't like the stand I was taking. She wanted me to affirm that. And I knew that that was not something, you know, it's not biblical to affirm that. So we went almost two years and in those two years, God did a major transformation in my own life. I discovered When my daughter came out of the closet, I went in the closet and I discovered that my identity was in my daughter and my identity was not in Christ where it should have been. Yes, I was saved. You know, if I had gone, if I had passed away in those days, I would have gone to heaven, but I was finding my identity in my child and not in Jesus. Hmm. So Jesus allowed me to 
walk through that and just take me back down to the to the bare bones, back down to the the foundation and begin to repair the cracks in, in my foundation and my belief system with him. And I know he was pursuing my daughter, but at that time he was really wanting to do a major work in me. And I think as parents, one, one of the first things I could tell parents is don't miss the work that God wants to do in you. That's so good. We try to think of the miracle being what happens with our child, but don't miss the miracle in the mirror. And so as God was pursuing my child, he was also pursuing me and bringing me through a journey of transformation as well. That's amazing. The Miracle in the Mirror. Is that a book title that you're going to have? That's yes. awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? It may be. Uh, I have a book coming out in two and a half months called The Daring Rescue, Joining Jesus Christ in His Pursuit of Your LGBT Identified Child's Heart. And so I will share, I share a lot of my story in there. But yeah, I think we become so focused on our child yes. that we forget that, hey, wait a minute, God is wanting to work on me as well. Mm -hmm. And when we shift the focus from our child back to God, that's the first big step in joining God where he's at work in pursuing our child. It's saying, okay, God, I'm here. I want to align with you. I want to set my eyes back on you. And as I follow you, I will be able to minister to my child the way you have called, called me to. That is so good. And I, I do sympathize with you because it, it's hard. You get hit, you got hit out of left field there with your, your daughter telling you that. And, and it's not something you just quote unquote fix. It's a journey. And in that sense, the McDonald's who we talked about in the last two episodes, embracing the journey, there's nothing wrong with that title. It's just how you choose to embrace the journey. You do need to embrace the journey. And I love that part of that journey is what God is doing in me, because really, that's the only thing we have control over is ourselves and that portion of the journey. I say that while simultaneously believing that our prayers move heaven and earth. Yes. And what I would like to do at the end of the show, if, if I'm sure you would like to just to, to say a prayer for all the parents out there and the children represented in this audience who are struggling in this area. But I know that I've had some moments as a parent where a child has come to me and revealed something out of left field. And you're, you're looking at your child and you're like, what do I do? And one thing that I can remember one time with one of my kids, the Lord just, I think it was the Holy Spirit. And I've said this on here before. I've said it in the previous two episodes. I'll say it again because I think it's so good. This is straight from the Lord. I looked at, I can remember one time, look at my child and just saying, first of all, I would recommend if a, if a child comes to you and tells you they're struggling this area commend them for their courage in telling you. Absolutely. That that is a beautiful bridge that you can build and then tell them there's nothing they can think, say or do. Yes. That will separate your love from them, that you will love them regardless of what they think, say and do and why do you love them that way? Because that's how God loves them. Yes. God loves them unconditionally. But as we talked about in the last couple of episodes, because he does love them unconditionally, and as do we, we do draw some lines and we want to affirm what is going to be healthy and holy for them, not just what they want to embrace or not just how they feel. We can feel any number of ways. We would never, I mentioned this in a previous episode, we would never embrace a child who thought that they were fat and we're anorexic and wasting away. We would never embrace that idea in their head that they were something that God didn't create them to be. And we wouldn't embrace that lie. So we need to embrace the truth. But first and foremost, the foundation of the relationship needs to be secure so that they know that their your love is not in question. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can think. There's nothing they can say that will change that. So where did it go from there in your journey with your daughter? Yeah, so you said something just a moment ago that is so true. And I think it's something that we really need to, to pay attention to and to take to heart. We can only control one person on this journey, and that is us. Mm -hmm. 
I don't care how old your child is. And I know that there are certain things that we can do when we have a child that's still living at home that we can't do. Our parenting changes, yes. you know, as our children get older. So wherever you are on the parenting schedule, either way, we still can really only control one person. And that that is me and that's you. Right. And so we have to trust the Holy Spirit to move and to work in our child's life. Scripture is very clear, the role of the Holy Spirit to to open the eyes of the blind, to create hunger and thirst for righteousness, to lead to salvation, to draw them to the heart of the Father. Those are things to, to cause them to repent, you know, bring them to a spirit of repentance and forgiveness. Those are things only the Holy Spirit can do. Yes. And so what can we do? Mm-hmm. We can we can love our children? We can take care of our heart wounds because we parent out of the wounds of our heart. That's how we live our lives. So if we've been injured, wounded somewhere in our heart, we're we're more than likely going to be defensive or protective in that area. So while your child may not be wanting to get help, while your child may think they're living their best life. Now is the time for you to be getting your your wounds, the wounds of your heart healed, to dig deeper in who Christ is, to know the character of God. I can't stress how important that is. We need to be able to go to scripture and say, you know, just like Psalm 118, I love the Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. And David knew those things because God had rescued him. So we need to know the character of God. We need to be willing to take care of our heart wounds. We need to face, as I talked about this in the last episode that we did, we need to be able to me need to be willing to face our own spiritual disappointments. Mm -hmm. God, you hurt me here, or you didn't show up like I thought you would have, or you acted out of character, or I feel like you're very absent over here in this area. We need to be willing to take those to God and allow God to minister to us and tell us, you know, give him permission to come into those wounds and allow him to speak to our heart. But then when it comes to our children, we, we need to love them well. Mm. And we have talked in one episode about what love is in first Corinthians 13, love rejoices with truth. And so are we continuing to hold to that truth? And what one of the things that I saw very early on with me and my daughter is I had a hard time. I'm I'm just going to be open and honest here. I had a hard time being around her at the beginning because all I could see now was her sin choice. All I could see now was her saying she was homosexual or, you know, having a girlfriend, those kind of things. And all that did was continue to separate us. And anytime she was around, I felt like I needed to bring it back up and, you know, all of those kind of things. And so I remember one day I said, God, I really need to see my daughter through your eyes. Yes. And as I began to pray that way, he began to show me how her and I are still a lot alike, how we still love to bake in the kitchen, how there are other things that we still love to do together And so while we can't open the eyes of our children, we can't make them want to follow Christ, we can love them. And so we can meet them in practical ways. And when we meet them in practical ways, when I show up at a coffee date with my daughter or we go to get a pedicure, when I surrender to Christ, Christ is the one that shows up. Mm. and has that time with my daughter. So I encourage parents to to create times where they can spend with their child. Catherine, there's so many things. <laughs> we could probably have a few episodes on this, but it's very important that we put a, a high priority on the relationship with our child. Mm-hmm. They need us. They need to know that we still love them. We need to be spending time with them. We need to be praying for them yes, and we need to be trusting the Holy Spirit at work, at work in their life. Mm -hmm. And 
their sin does not define their worth. Mm -hmm. And so pray for eyes to see them beyond what, what we physically want to see. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, we spent the last two episodes talking about Stanley's message. And one thing he said I thought was really true. He said a lot of parents parent this way, convince, convict, coerce, control, convince, convict, coerce, control, convince, convict, coerce, control. He's right. A lot of parents do parent that way. Yeah, I'm raising my hand right now. I did that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that. I think at some point we all do. At some point yes. we all try to coerce or con- well control. That's a big issue. We try to convince. We try to convict them. And I was thinking about we need to be clear on this. It's God's job to convince and convict, not ours. We are to lead, we are to teach, we are to speak truth, and we are to love, but we cannot convince and we cannot convict our children. That is above our pay grade. Yes. And it's the devil who coerces and controls, right? Yes. So absolutely. I'm going to say something harsh here, but it needs to be said. I said, if we, if we coerce and control as parents, we are doing the devil's work. Absolutely. We are. And on some level, like I, we just said, we've all done it. We've all been there. We've all tried to control our kids. That's the way the devil works. That is not the way God works. God offers an invitation for us, as we talked about in the last episode, to lay down our idols. He will let us cling to them, but he offers us an invitation to sit at his feet and to worship the one true God who will lead us and walk us into freedom. So we must repent of that as parents if we have tried to coerce or control. We also must repent if we're trying to convince or convict. That's above our pay grade. The other one's below our pay grade. That's working along with with the enemy. And so whenever we're trying to do any of that stuff, we are operating in the wrong spirit. We're operating as the Holy Spirit when we're not or we're walk- we're operating as the enemy and hopefully we don't want to we we want to agree with the holy spirit but we need to recognize where we aren't the holy spirit. So this is what I jotted down. With our children we must one love unconditionally. As yes. I said before, nothing you could think, say or do will change my love for you. Number 2, pray fervently. That is where we do have I don't want to say control, but we who do have authority. We have authority oh, over yeah. what we have authored. So I can pray for my child and I can issue things in the spirit and and pray for obstacles to be removed. But that's where I do have some authority and some power to work in that area. And that's something my husband and I do every day. I have a list of scriptures, like free resources on my website that we pray over children that have walked away from the Lord that we know. We pray over children, different areas. I've got it's indexed according to topics. So praying fervently for your child. And then three, speak the truth in love when led by the spirit. Yes. Like you were talking about because you wanted every single encounter to be this life altering thing. And maybe you just need to get a manicure. Maybe you just need to sit there and do a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, that's funny. We were doing those up with my mom recently and we had three different generations of kids. It was so amazing. Like, well, three different generations of family members, my mom, me and then the kids and I'm like it was the best time just sitting there yeah doing the breeze playing some games watching a movie getting your nails done and then allow the Holy Spirit don't look for it wait for his little whisper and don't make it more than what he wants it to be because the Holy Spirit has to do this work your kid if you've raised them in a Christian home they know the truth yes they know it yes you don't have to preach it again It's not something they don't know. They just don't believe it right now. Yeah. So if they don't believe it right now, I can't convince them. I can't convict them. I better not coerce them. (laughs) I better not try to control them. Any of that's going to damage my relationship. I need to love them. And then if there's a little moment where the Holy Spirit says, just, just this little, this little moment of truth here or there is, is that how you've kind of learned to walk with your relationship with your daughter? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, this morning, I'm sitting here looking at it, Catherine, in my quiet time with the Lord. It's like the Holy Spirit whispered to me, the way of the Spirit is eternal. Mm -hmm. And when we 
try to take matters into our own hands, scripture is very clear that what we do in the flesh will be burned up. It is temporal. It is only what we see right now in the moment. But when the Holy Spirit is at work and moving and we move and respond with the Holy Spirit, the work the Spirit does is eternal. And that is what we want happening with our kids. Right. I don't want my daughter coming to me next week or whenever and saying, okay, mom, I'm, I'm not going to be homosexual anymore. I'm going to start dating guys. I mean, that's all good and well. But, but Catherine, the, the bottom line is my prayer is not for my daughter to be heterosexual. Thank you. Yes. My prayer is for my daughter to be holy and to be in a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the best ways that we can pray for our children is not for them to become heterosexual or whatever you're praying for your child right now. Mm -hmm. The best prayers are, Lord, heal the wounds of their hearts. Mm. And as he heals the wounds of their hearts, they are going to begin to be able to trust him be able to move in response to him. And as the spirit works, it will be an eternal work. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. So as we surrender, you know, I, I used to think I'm, well, I was, I was praying for my daughter to surrender to Jesus. But then one day I woke up and I was like, you know what, God, you're asking me to surrender too. Mm -hmm. You are asking me to lay down all my rights as a mom. You're asking me to lay down my dreams. You're asking me to lay down my plans to, to bring my, my daughter to you. You want me to surrender just as much as I'm asking my daughter to Mm -hmm. parents. We're leaders. We need to be leading our children in the way of surrender. We need to be leading our children in the way of repentance. We need to be leading our children in the way of forgiveness. I had to repent of my pride. It's not just the LGBTQ that has pride. Mm -hmm. I was very prideful in my ways. I didn't see God working like I thought he should. So this pride in me rose up and was like, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll fix it this way. We need to be those who who teach our children what repentance looks like. We need to be able to go. I went back to my daughter and said, hey, these specific things that I said to you, I am so sorry. Mm. I know that hurt you. I apologize. I, I said these things. I was acting out of the flesh. And the last thing I ever want to do is hurt you. And I am so sorry. Will you forgive me? If we cannot be the first ones to go and ask for forgiveness from our children, how are we going to teach our children what forgiveness looks like? Mm. And so as we lead this way, we lead through repentance, forgiveness, healing. And as we do that and lead through surrendering, our children are going to be watching Mm. and they're going to notice the, the change. Jesus Christ is transforming me too. I am not the same person I was 12 years ago. And I thank God I am not. And so is my daughter seeing through me that Jesus Christ is a living savior who still transforms lives. I can only do that as I surrender. And as I do, I allow the Holy Spirit room to move and to work and to love on her and to meet her where she is. God, how can you use me the day to be a part of the healing in my daughter's heart? Because I tell you, I have spoken words that were not kind and I had to go back and ask her forgiveness. But Jesus, I firmly believe, Catherine, that God has entrusted this journey to us as parents Mm -hmm. And as we engage with him, he will equip us for everything we need on this journey. Yes. We have to know we've been entrusted. God knew my daughter, according to Psalm 139, he knew our children before he ever placed them in the womb. And perhaps you're an adoptive parent today. God knew that child before that child was ever placed in your arms. He knew the parent the child was going to need, and he knew the child each parent was going to need. My life has been changed. I have been transformed on this journey. Mm. 
I would not have chosen this, but do I really believe that God is a sovereign God and that he has entrusted this to me? Now I am called to be a good steward. You know, in, oh, I cannot even remember the scripture. You're really good at that, that Catherine. But, you know, we were reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. And because of that, we now have the ministry of reconciliation. Yes, yes. We are ambassadors of Christ. Are we living that out? I had that one memorized. The address is escaping me. I want to say Colossians, but I'll look it up. I think, yes, it's, I think it's Colossians too. But we we have a higher calling than mom, dad, grandparent, mother. I mean, sister, family. We have a higher calling than that. And that is to be a minister of reconciliation, an ambassador of Christ. We are to be employing to the world, be reconciled to God. And we can only do that by living surrendered lives to him and allow him to be moving in and through us. He is the one who draws all men unto him. And we need to give him the room to do that. Oh, that is so beautiful. I teared up while you were talking. It's so, so beautiful. And the one thing that came to mind, obviously, the virtue that they have claimed for the LGBTQ movement, which, of course, isn't a virtue, but their virtue is pride. Right. It's pride. That's what they claim. It's pride. Of course, we know that God hates pride. He detests pride. But of course, they're saying it's pride in their identity. It's pride in their identifying themselves by their attraction. But what then must we move in as Christians? Opposite spirit. We have to move in the opposite spirit, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just science right there. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And it's that equal and opposite reaction. What is that? Humility. Yes. We have got to be walking in parents. And that's what I heard just laced all throughout your beautiful yes. comments is that we must walk in the body of Christ. And as parents, whatever our kids are struggling with in a spirit of humility, especially when it comes to this issue of LGBTQ, because they're claiming pride in it. And in order to counteract the pride, we will walk, we must walk in humility. And that means owning those places where we have made mistakes, where we have harmed, where we have injured, where we have not reacted correctly, and learning how to walk in humility and not the visual that comes to mind has become like the Amway salesman for God, you know, to where every encounter has to be, you know, when you've been around somebody who's doing multi-level marketing, no offense if that's what you do out there, but you know, when <laughs> everything turns into a conquest, everything turns yes. into an opportunity <laughs> to sell something. <laughs> I, I saw myself doing that with one of my kids recently where I was just like peppering something in there and I'm like, oh my gosh, it was total Amway there. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be walking in humility, not looking for looking for those opportunities to connect, looking for those opportunities to love, never denying truth. Man, we spent two whole episodes talking about the truth. We're not denying that. But if no. your child, like I said, is not walking with the Lord, whether it's this issue or another issue, if they're not walking in the Lord, it's not because they don't know the truth. They know the truth. You don't have to beat them over the head with that anymore. They know the truth. What they need to know is, do you love them even if they don't believe the truth? Yes. I think, I think if there was one thing that we could really hone in on, on this journey as parents, and that we could really practice, that we could really study, that we could learn the art of, it would be to be a good listener. Mm. Humility requires listening. Humility requires saying, okay, I'm not going to talk right now because God, I believe what you have to say is more important. That's awesome. And so as we learn to listen to the father, he speaks to us. What is, what is that that Jesus said? Jesus said, I do only what I see my father doing. And as we learn to listen to the father and we allow the spirit to move through us, we're going to be able to minister to our child. As we listen, as we sit before our child, not already trying to think of a comeback, yeah. as we sit before our child, to truly listen, we're going to, they're, they're going to earn, we're going to earn trust with them. We're going to hear the backstories. We're going to hear their wounds. We're going to hear their heart. We're going to hear where they've put up a defense. We're going to hear the lies that they believed. And then we are going to be able to go back and target those things in prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
if I, it, I wish, oh, Catherine, I wish one, I wish I would have only said three words to my daughter that day. I love you. And I'm here with you. I'm going to walk with you through this. I'm not going anywhere. And this is a journey we're going to take together. I wish I would have said that. And I wish I would have sat at her feet and said, thank you for entrusting your heart to me. Thank you for giving me your deepest struggle and your wounds. And I am going to hold your heart. I'm going to care for your heart. And we are going to walk this together, whatever it looks like. I wish I would have just sat at her feet and listened, but thank God he's a redeeming God. And as he's brought healing in my heart, I have been able to go back to her and ask for forgiveness. And we've had those conversations and God showed me in that because I know there are many parents listening today that are like, oh my goodness, Melinda, I have messed up so bad. God is greater than our biggest mistake. Mm Mm-hmm. And one other thing, he does not need us to reach our kids. He can reach your child, even if you never did another thing. God is the hound dog of heaven, and he is in hot pursuit of your child, just as he is in hot pursuit of you too. This journey is 100% about your child and 100% about you. You allow God to do what he needs to do in you, and he will be also working in pursuing your child as well. Uh, I want to end this this episode in prayer for the parents out there that are dealing with this and the children that are dealing with this. But, you know, I love the way you kind of phrased it or the imagery that came to mind is that when you're in your conversations, especially once they know what the scripture says. They know what God teaches. They know all of these things. So when that's where you are, our conversations with them are not opportunities to preach, not opportunities to reinforce truth, because we're never denying, we'll never deny the truth. We spent, like I said, two whole episodes going deep into that. But they're reconnaissance missions right there. What you're learning from your child is what you need to go pray about on your knees. And then if there's ever a moment where they invite you in and ask your opinion, well, obviously you give it. And if there's a little thing that the Lord whispers into your ear to say to them. But at this point, when you have an adult child that's walking into this and if they've been raised in the church, then they likely know what the truth is. So you don't have to be. That's not what your conversation is about. Your conversations need to be about gathering the information you need to pray with and just loving your child spending time with your child. So that's so important. I would love for us to end this show in prayer. I do this occasionally, and this is certainly one of those moments where I think it would be good. Why don't you go ahead and pray and I'll wrap it up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Before we do, before we do, I just, I would like to just end it with the prayer. So tell everybody where they can learn more about you and get connected to your podcast first and get connected to your ministry. And then we will end this in prayer. Yes. So you can find me on Instagram at Melinda H. Patrick. I have a website, melindapatrick.org. You can send me an email. I love uh, being able to walk this journey with parents. So send me an email at Melinda, M-E-L-I-N-D-A, Melinda at melindapatrick.org. And you can tune into my podcast, The Bridge Between Us podcast, Loving Your LGBTQ Identified Child Without Compromising Truth. And you will hear testimonies of those who have come out of the LGBT community and pursuing Christ. You will hear teachings. You will hear words of encouragement and equipping to embolden you on this journey. And it's also a community where you learn you're not alone. This can be a lonely journey for parents. And so we would love for you to join us there. And I I think that's all, Catherine. Did I, yeah. I shared everything? I think we got all your information and my listeners can get in touch with you. I'm sure they will. They've gotten in touch with me. This I didn't say this before. This is probably the number one issue that I get written about. And that my podcast is not, you know, it's about all sorts of apologetic issues, this being one of them. But this is the number one issue that people reach out to me about. And like I said, in one of the previous episodes, I know at least at least a half a dozen. And let me just preface this. I've been in the homeschool community for 10 years. So I have at least a half dozen other moms from homeschool communities 
that are walking this journey and they have shared their hearts with me and their burdens with me. So I know that they would, I I will appreciate being able to get in touch with you and have you help them walk through this journey. So let's, let's end this episode in prayer. Yes. So father, we, we come before you today, Lord, and I just, I thank you so much, father, for the opportunity Lord, to speak into the lives of parents, family members, Lord, even those who are struggling. Father, we know that you are the answer. You are the answer to our every need. You satisfy us. You hear us. You fight for us. You bring healing to us. You redeem us, and you are our Savior. So, Father, as we sit before you today, Lord, I pray, Father, for just a special comfort and a peace, Lord, to come over these parents. I'm reminded of Jesus in the upper room with the disciples and he had, they had taken the last supper and then he stood up and he took off his outer clothing and he knelt at each disciple's feet and he washed their feet. And when he was done, he stood up and he said, I have set an example that you should do as I have done. Hmm. Father, that is what you have called us to do as the body of Christ, to wash feet. Mm -hmm. As we are walking this journey, Lord, it comes with many bumps. It comes with trials. It comes with times where we don't know what to do. But Father, I thank you, God, that we can lean in and trust in you. You are the God who speaks and you are the God who rescues. And I think about David in Psalm 18, you brought him out into a spacious place because you delighted in him. But not only did you bring him out, Lord, you then began to equip and train him for battle. Father, I pray, Lord, over each of these parents that they would be strengthened in their innermost being. I ask, Father, for those who are struggling and wanting healing, that you would place your people in their path and that you would give them the faith and the strength and the obedience it takes to lay their idols down and to begin walking out this healing journey with you. You are a God who only gives good gifts. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, a blessing over this community, Lord. I thank you for Catherine. I thank you for her stand for truth and grace. I thank you, Father, for her voice and this platform that you have entrusted to her, Lord, and how you, how she is using it, Lord, for your glory and for the strengthening and the equipping of the body of Christ. Oh, how much we need this today. Lord, we ask that you would be glorified and honored. For the parent that is wondering right now or the struggler, are you trustworthy? Father, would you open their eyes today and Mm -hmm. remind them of where you have been with them all of their life? You are a trustworthy God. And so, Father, we commit our loved ones. We commit even ourselves to you today. And we ask, Father, that you be glorified and honored in Jesus name. Amen. I stand in agreement with everything that Melinda prayed, Lord. And as she was praying, I just had this sense, you know, I think what the LGBTQ community thinks the church wants to do is just kind of call them out before a holy judge and sentence them. No, no, a thousand times no. The Spirit of God wants to cover us. The Spirit of God wants to cover every parent that's walking this journey right now with their child. The Spirit of God wants to cover every child, every human being on the face of this planet that is walking this journey right now. And he wants to say, I love you. I died for you. Let me be the Lord. I promise you, I have a good future for you. I have a good future. I have good things planned. And I have freedom ahead available. If you will let go of your identity that's found in anything other than me, let go and allow me to be your Lord. I am a good God. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Let me take that for you so that you can walk in freedom. Yes, I've expressed the ways in which we walk in freedom in the word. He has. He's expressed those ways in his word. But that way is the way of freedom. But let him love you. Let him adore you. 
feel your proud Papa up in heaven surrounding you with his love and let him take everything out from you that is not of him and become your Lord so that you can walk in freedom. That's what he wants for you. That's who he is. And yes, his truth, as he said, will set you free. But experience his love first. It's the kindness. It's the kindness of God that draws us all to repentance. So, Father, I pray that every parent out there that's walking this journey can feel your love. I pray that every child out there that's walking this journey can feel your love. And then have the courage to embrace your truth and walk in freedom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Moms and dads, if someone you know is parenting a child who is struggling with their sexuality and they want to walk biblically in freedom, please share these episodes with them. And don't hesitate to reach out if you need encouragement or prayer. My email address is Catherine at CatherineSegers.com. Either I or Melinda would be honored to hear your story and to pray with you. I want to thank you for joining me today. Look, I know there are a lot of things you could be listening to right now, and I really appreciate that you took this time to spend with me. I hope you will join me for my next podcast when we take aim at some aspect of our culture that threatens to derail our parenting and steal our kids' faith. If you enjoyed this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World, would you consider telling a friend and sharing it on social media and giving it a good review over on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and following me on Facebook and Instagram? Oh, oh, and maybe you could say that Christian Parent Crazy World is the best podcast you've ever heard in your entire life. uh, Just a thought. Uh, and be sure to check out my website, which is katherinesegers.com. That's Catherine with a C. I have lots of articles and resources there that will help you on your parenting journey. And if you subscribe, I will be sure to send you some really cool free stuff and notify you of future podcasts, articles, and blogs. I want to end this and every episode with a word of encouragement. God gave you Your kids, your specific kids for a reason. That's because you hold the key to unlocking who God created them to be. We'll see you next time. Christian Parent Crazy World is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. You may be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know that we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store? One of those shows, Words of Life, is currently in a series on parenting. We'll be joined by families at all stages of parenting to hear their testimony and what they've learned along the way. We've realized that we are her first experience with faith, you know, and what she sees in us. And we're really mindful of how we react to things on how we speak. I've always thought, like, I'm not raising this kid to just grow up, right? I'm raising them to be a fully grown adult who is functional in society. As a father, as a parent, I feel my goal in life is to share the very best parts of me. Those values that you guys instilled in us certainly is something that we give to ours. Find Words of Life wherever you get your podcasts or visit wordsoflifepodcast.org to start listening.